A study was conducted to determine the factor that reduces blood pressure the most, medication, diet, or exercise. 15 patients at a hospital with comparable levels of high blood pressure are randomly assigned to each treatment. After eight weeks, the drop in systolic blood pressure for each patient was measured. Use the data below the Kruskal Wallace H test and a 5% significance level to test the claim that all three of the treatments produce the same drop in blood pressure. So the problem comes from a completely randomized design experiment. They took patients who had high blood pressure and they randomly assigned them to each one of the three treatments, right? So you know, each one, there are five patients assigned to each treatment and each person only undergoes one of the treatments, right? And then what they want to do is test the claim that all three have the same drop in blood pressure. Now normally we would use the ANOVA CRD on this type of problem, but now we're going to use the Kruskal Wallace H test, which is a non-parametric procedure, which is an alternative to the ANOVA CRD experiment. All right, so the first step of that, of course, is to express the claim symbolically. So I've done that for us already just to save us a little bit of time. The claim is simply that the median for the med group is equal to the median for the diet group is equal to the median for the exercise group, right? Now from there, what we want to do is express HO and HA. HO is the same as the claim here. It always expresses the claim of equality. So in this case, it's this guy. And of course, we know that HA always says that at least one. So at least one differs significantly. from the rest, right? From the rest. Okay, so that's your HA, that at least one of the treatments differs significantly from the rest. All right, now our next step is supposed to be the data step. Let's just write down that our alpha is 5%. We'll keep that in mind for later, right? And then from there, what we wanna do is go and rank the data. So it's time to rank our data set. So rank the data and determine the data rank, or the rank totals, excuse me. So, and determine the rank totals, the rank totals. Okay, so let's get the data out and we'll do that next. Okay, so here's our data. I've copied it down again on a separate sheet of paper just so we can do some writing on it. What we're gonna do is we're going to rank all the data as if it was one giant set of values not in separate categories, right? And then afterwards, we'll uh, separate the ranks into their respective treatment columns, right? So let's first rank the data all as if it was one sample set. So the smallest number I see off the bat is two. I don't see anything lower than that. So I'm gonna give that rank one. Then from there, let's look, three would be rank two, right? Is there any other threes? No, how about four? Four would be rank three. Then five would be rank four. Then six would be rank five. Any other sixes? No. Okay, then we do seven. Seven would be rank six. Uh, any other sevens? No. All right, eight would be rank seven. And eight, since there's a tie, right? So seven, eight. Oh, nine, there's another tie, right? So seven, eight, nine, and let's circle those, right? We're gonna circle them to remind ourselves that those are all tied, so we'll have to adjust them later, right? Then we have 10, 10 would get rank 10 and rank 11, right? And again, those are tied, so do something to indicate that, like put a little dot or something like that. Then the next value would be the actual number 11, which would get rank 12. No other 11s. 12 will get rank 13. Then we'll have 14 gets rank 4. No, 13 gets rank 14, sorry. And 14 gets rank 15. All right, now notice that we have 15 numbers and we gave out a total of, or total top rank of 15. So we know now that we've given out um, as many ranks as we have values, and that's important. Now from there, we want to look back and see were there any ties other than the ones that I already identified, and I don't think so, right? There were no other ties other than the 8s. The 8s were all tied and the 10s were tied, right? And I don't think we had any other tie to speak of. Okay, so without any other ties, let's just adjust the ties that we have. Um, for 7, 8, and 9, those are tied values, and if you add them up and average them, you're going to find that the middle number between 7, 8, and 9 is going to be your average. So they're all going to get the value 8. So each of these will get the value 8. That's the average of all three. 
eight. So I'll leave it like that. And then here the average will be 10 and a half. So we'll do 10.5, 10.5. For those two that were tied, we'll average those and get 10.5. Okay, now let's get our ring totals for each column of data. So let's add them up. So let's do the rank total for the meds category, the rank total for exercise, and the rank total for the diet group. Okay, so we have 12 plus 10.5 plus 8 plus 15 plus 14. This is for the rank total of the medication group, which is 59.5. Then we'll do the rank total for the exercise group. Okay, so we have 6 plus 8 plus 3 plus 1 plus 2. So 6, 8, 3, 1, 2. Those are the five numbers there and they have a total rank of 20. Okay, and then our last one is going to be 13 plus 5 plus 10.5 plus 8 plus 4. And when I'm done I get the answer 40.5. 40.5. Okay, so those are our rank totals. Now what we want to do with that is take that back to our data step here and put them into our test stat formula. So let's go ahead and do that. If you recall, our test stat is this variable h and the formula is 12 over n times n plus 1 times the rank total in this case for medication squared over n for medication. That's just the number of values in that column the rank total for exercise squared divided by the number of values in the exercise column plus the rank total for diet squared divided by the number of values in the diet column and then minus 3 times n plus 1. Okay, so it'll be 12 over, if you look there were 15 numbers there in black, 5 for each column, 3 columns, that's going to give you 15, so n is 15, n plus 1 of course then is 16. The rank total here is 59.5 squared divided by 5 plus 20 squared divided by 5 plus 40.5 squared divided by 5 minus 3 times 16. n plus 1 is 16. Okay, let's check that out and see what we get. So for our test stat, you can do this a number of ways, but you can just do 12 divided by parenthesis 15 times 16. Close that parenthesis, then hit times, open parenthesis, 59.5 squared divided by 5 plus 20 squared divided by 5 plus 40.5 squared divided by 5. Close it up, minus 3 times 16 or 48. 3 times 16 or the number 48. And when we're done, we get the answer 7.805. So 7.805. So that's your answer for the H test statistic. All right, now, once we have that, the next step, of course, is to compare our test stat against a critical value. So let's get another sheet of paper out so we can begin to work on that. Okay, so remember that this H test statistic is distributed as a chi-squared random variable would be. So it's got a long skinny tail, you know. Either way, this is our rejection region. And what we want to do is figure out the chi-squared value that starts the rejection region down here on the number line. So the chi-squared value is going to have alpha and k minus 1 degrees of freedom. So for us, that's chi-squared 0 0.05 because we had a 5% significance level and k minus 1 is just 2 here. We had two treatments, right? Medication, exercise, and diet. So there it is. Let's go to our table now, our chi-squared table. We're going to look in the 0 0.05 column under 2 degrees of freedom and that will give us our critical value. Okay, so we're on the chi-squared table looking at 0 0.05 with 2 degrees of freedom. We find the answer 5.99147. Okay, so our critical value is 5.991. And 
Now if we compare our test stat, which is H is equal to 7.805, we see that that value falls in the rejection region. So we're going to say that we should reject HO and therefore support HA. All right, now looking at our claim, our claim is HO, so we're going to say that we reject the claim. So the sample data, the sample data allows us to reject the claim. And of course, the claim is that all the treatments produce the same effect upon the blood pressure levels. 